uh, Artsakh or Nagorno-Karabakh was ethnically cleansed essentially uh, in September. For Armenians, this is uh, a major calamity, um, uh, probably second to uh, only 1915. Uh, so I wanted to ask you, what is the Canadian government's position uh, on how the issue should be resolved? Uh, how can Canada help put Indigenous Armenians back in their homes and their homeland? No, well, we have been very clear uh, in, in condemning the use of military force uh, in Nagorno-Karabakh. We have been very clear that the rights uh, of the people to return uh, must be respected, whether that is to return uh, on a permanent basis to live, whether that is to return uh, temporarily to collect possessions or to dispose of property, uh, whether to simply visit uh, uh, you know, ancestral sites, uh, family graves, whatever, the right of the pop the, the rights of the people uh, to their homes need to be respected. Uh, and again, uh, as uh, a, a, from a, coming from a country like Canada, uh, where we have a strong tradition of pluralism, multiculturalism, uh, of respect for minorities, and in which we have you know such a plethora of different communities, we inherently see the benefit uh, that comes from having a vibrant multi-ethnic society and all of the different contributions that that can break. Um, so again, it would be to Azerbaijan's, it would be an Azerbaijan self-interest to allow for uh, the population uh, to return and to thrive because that will contribute to uh, to 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 the, the vibrancy and strengthening uh, of the country. Again, given given the history and uh, difficulties that have existed between the two countries, uh, we certainly would very much understand if anyone felt, no, they, they don't have enough trust and they don't have enough uh, uh, sense of security that they would want to return, uh, uh, then I think that the work that the government of Armenia has done to take them in, and not just the government, I should say, I think also just the, the, the tremendous welcome that the people of Armenia, the tremendous humanitarian effort of sheltering and bringing people in uh, after they were forced to flee Nagorno-Karabakh uh, has been remarkable uh, in terms of the, the spirit of generosity that you've seen. Uh, and so I think the effort that the government has made to make it clear that the people are welcome and would be welcome to stay uh, if they chose to uh, in Armenia uh, is also very commendable. Um, so again, we, uh, again, it, would, it is ultimately up to the choice of every individual how they want to proceed. But from Canada, and again, I, from the rest of the international community, I believe have been equally uh, 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 delivering messages, consistently delivering the same message uh, that the rights of uh, the population of Nagorno-Karabakh uh, to return must be respected. And do you see any movement or any gestures from Azerbaijan that would increase your confidence in that? Because uh, 120,000 Armenians voted with their feet under blockade and threat of mass slaughter, um, and indicating that they don't believe a single ounce, uh, you know, of any of the guarantees given so far, including statements from the international community. Excuse me for being so blunt, of course, but you know, it's very difficult as an Armenian to uh, believe anything coming out of Baku. But we're not even seeing any words to that effect. We're seeing mm -hmm. churches being destroyed. We're seeing uh, cemeteries being raised to the ground. So. Uh, you know, it's it seems like we're being told that there is effectively very little that the international community can do vis-a-vis -vis Baku. No, I think the uh, certainly on point about the uh, destruction of churches and monuments, we we likewise have spoken out very strongly against this. Uh, again, working to advocate, uh, including through UNESCO, for the importance of the preservation of cultural heritage, uh, which again is. Uh, just quite remarkable. I, I had the chance to visit uh, with the, 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 the Holy See in Etmedzi, Mother See in Etmedzi, and was able to see firsthand some of the examples of the catch cars and monuments that had been brought out in order to ensure that they were not destroyed. And they are they are remarkable works of art, uh, even leaving aside the, the, the cultural and historic significance. 
the uh, and again looking at the events of the past few years the the conflict in 2020 uh the blockade the ongoing incidents of violence and then finally culminating with the the military operations in in September of last year uh no of course it's perfectly understandable that uh, anyone in those circumstances in Nagorno Karabakh would have, have felt compelled to to flee for their lives uh, and I think any you, you or I or anyone who had been in those circumstances would have done the same. Uh, and so while uh, we have seen uh, some statements that have come from Baku about people are welcome to return and they would have the same rights as, as other citizens of Azerbaijan, this again goes back to the point I was saying earlier about the need to uh, take action to 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 establish trust and overcome uh, the hostility that has existed. Uh, and again, when you see that uh, the government in Azerbaijan has used military force to resolve uh, the the conflict, uh, is still making statements with very aggressive rhetoric. Uh, that is not something that is designed uh, to build trust or to allay anyone's fears. Uh, so again, the the concerns that have been expressed and the, the reasons why people do not feel comfortable yet in being able to return are, are perfectly valid. And I think you know the vast majority of people in those circumstances would would feel the same. Uh, and so that's why it is incumbent on Baku to demonstrate uh, that, that 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 there is something beyond these words. That it is not just uh, empty rhetoric. Uh, and again, this is one of the reasons why we continue to argue that uh, the best outcome would be the, the conclusion of a peace agreement. Because uh, again, all of these issues, be it on cultural heritage, be it on prisoners of war, uh, the rights of people to return to their homes, uh, can be addressed. Uh, so it uh, is something we continue to advocate for uh, in in every opportunity. And again, as I said, whether it be discussions of cultural preservation in UNESCO, be it in the OSCE, be it in the United Nations, or be it in our bilateral engagement with uh, not just Yerevan and Baku, but also Ankara. Hope you enjoyed this clip from our podcast. Click on the link to listen to the entire episode. And remember... Your support helps us get the word out, so please donate to us at podcasts.groom.org or scan the barcode on your screen. Please like our videos, subscribe to our channel, and share our content with your network. Thanks in advance.